Here are stories making news right now. I'm Rob Johnson. If you have a teen or a tween, you know all about the video game Fortnite. The kids are obsessed with it. And as CBS 2's Dorothy Tucker reports, it's driving parents a bit crazy. Have you ever heard of this game called Fortnite? That's it on, uh, on, on YouTube. I have to admit I'd never heard of the game, but today I'm working on a story about just how popular this game is. In fact, so popular that some parents are worried that their children are addicted to the game. Uh, and we talked to a, a child psychiatrist today who agrees that it is possible for children to go overboard in this game and that if your son or your daughter plays more than three or so hours a night, then you need to be concerned because it's what they're missing out on is contact with family, contact with friends. They're, they're in their rooms. Um, and they're just spending too much time disconnected from the rest of the world because they're playing this game. However, the upside of this game is that you do, you can play peer to peer, kind of like they're doing here, the people are talking to each other, but still uh, child psychiatrists say that you really need to make sure that your child is not just on the computer and that they need to get out. Parents talk about how the kids sneak and play at night and they have a tr problems getting up in the morning. There are some things that uh, the child uh, psychiatrist uh, suggest that you really just kind of put your foot down and begin to say to your child, you can only do this after you do your homework. You can only play the game after you have dinner with the family, after you play with your siblings or so. Uh, it's, it's a really hot game, but there are some issues. And now here is CBS 2 Suzanne Lemignot with how one suburb got its goat. I'm with Romeoville Animal Control Officer Mary Ann Helton, and she rescued this little guy that you're going to see right here. That is a baby pygmy goat, about nine months old. Is that right? Yes. And That's my guess. You rescued him from oncoming traffic on Route 53 yesterday? Yes. Yep. So he tell was me. just running down the sidewalk on the side of the road, and I just uh, jumped out of my car, threw my lights on, had uh, some backup to just help control traffic and basically it was just teamwork and we pushed him off the road out of the road and I found a jiffy lube with the garages open and I just with a blanket and lassoed him and just uh, got them to close their garage and we were we were in uh, pretty good shape and the lasso is this thing right here that's what you use yeah this is my actual dog catcher everyday use right there but now it's a goat catcher wow <laughs> and you've been doing this 13 years i have been doing this 13 years and marianne we still don't know who the owner of this little guy is we don't but if nobody comes forward i'm gonna be the new owner <laughs> he's found a new mommy huh and finally meteorologist mary Kay kleist has your forecast we can expect gusty winds around for your Wednesday. We're actually tracking a cold front that's going to be moving through tonight, and that's going to spark a strong northerly and northeasterly wind during the day tomorrow. So we have two systems now, one to the south, but we're seeing the one to the north lining up through the Twin Cities, northern Wisconsin, scattering clouds ahead of it, rain alongside of it and behind the front. But on the satellite review, we have clear skies northwest. It's just a few spotty sprinkles left in northwest Indiana this evening and clouds, and those are on the way out. So we'll watch tonight as low pressure that brought us the cloud deck and sprinkles. That's going to move away. We'll watch that secondary front press through tonight and during the day tomorrow. Sunshine will move in for your daytime hours, but as winds come around that high, that's why I'm expecting to see the gusty winds. We don't expect rain along that front, just the wind shift and the gusty winds during the day for your Wednesday.